but let's take rewind because we've I know we've got people who watch who who aren't as that advanced on this stuff. So so a USDC Tether in theory are asset backed stable coins that are theoretically fully reserve backed by dollars and dollar equivalents in a bank account. Algorithmic stablecoin basically uses some algorithm to base the value of the stablecoin or peg it to something like a dollar by basically moving other assets in or out of something like a smart contract, right? And so, so what you're saying is now, now segue that into your 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 comment on the run uh, that so, you were starting to so explain. Bill, the way I said, there, there, there are three types of, of coins. The first type of coin is a coin that's over collateralized. So you uh, 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 make it ours over collateralized. It has more collateral than 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 what's in the stable coin underneath it. And uh, USDT apparently apparently is also over collateralized because they have made profits on the investments. Yep. Then you've got a one to one backed, which is circle, and then you've got an algorithmic backed stable coin, which is not backed by anything except arbitrage. So when it gets under the peg, they count on people to buy it back and bring it back to the peg. And when it goes over, they count on people bringing it down. We've never seen an algorithmic based stable coin work. There isn't one that has worked and Luna Terra was the first one that almost worked. Where do I think they made a fatal mistake? So I think they made a fatal mistake when they lost their identity. And what they said is we are an algorithmic backed stable coin, but we're also now going to collateralize our stable coin to a certain extent. And when they said that when they came out and they bought $3 billion worth of Bitcoin to collateralize $20 billion worth of a coin, they effectively found themselves in a very strange place. Because when you have a $20 billion collateral, but a $20 billion float, but only a 1.5 or 2 or $3 billion collateral, you're an uncollateralized stable coin. And you open yourself up for attack because anybody says, hold on a second, you've got now, three billion. You went, they went out into the market and they publicized the fact that they were buy, that they had three billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, and they publicized the price at which they bought it. At that point, any smart person would have looked at this and said, "Hold on a second. Three billion is backing twenty billion, and the three billion, as soon as the price of Bitcoin comes down, becomes two billion and one and a half billion, or whatever the number is." And then it becomes very, very, very easy to, it becomes an attack vector. Because what you know is that as soon as you dig through the one and a half billion, it's game over and you go to zero. And then it becomes a shortest, uh, a, 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 tr a trader's paradise or an attacker's paradise. And specifically Wall Street that have been doing this for many, many, many years. George Soros has been doing this for many, many, many years. They know the metrics. And so where do I think the fundamental fault was? The fundamental fault was where they crossed the chasm and they said, we are now a semi-collateralized coin because there's no such thing. You're either uncollateralized or you're fully collateralized. But if you're semi-collateralized, you're not worth anything. And that's where I think they made the biggest mistake of their lives. <laughs>